Alabama is an American country, Southern rock and bluegrass band formed in Fort Payne, Alabama in 1969. The band was founded by Randy Owen, lead vocals, rhythm guitar, and his cousin Teddy Gentry, bass guitar, background vocals. They were soon joined by their other cousin, Jeff Cook, lead guitar, fiddle, and keyboards. First operating under the name Wild Country, the group toured the Southeast Bar Circuit in the early 1970s, and began writing original songs. They changed their name to Alabama in 1977 and following the chart success of two singles, were approached by RCA Records for a record deal. Alabama's biggest success came in the 1980s, where the band had over 27 number one hits, seven multi-platinum albums and received numerous awards. Alabama's first single on RCA Records, Tennessee River, began a streak of 21 number one singles, including Love in the First Degree, 1981, Mountain Music, 1982, Dixieland Delight, 1983, If You're Gonna Play in Texas, You Gotta Have a Fiddle in the Band, 1984, and Song of the South, 1987. The band's popularity waned slightly in the 1990s although they continued to produce hit singles and multi-platinum album sales. Alabama disbanded in 2006 following a farewell tour and two albums of inspirational music but reunited in 2010 and have continued to record and tour worldwide. The band's blend of traditional country music and southern rock combined with elements of gospel, and pop music gave it a crossover appeal that helped lead to their success. They also toured extensively and incorporated production elements such as lighting and sets inspired by rock concerts into their shows. The band has over 30 number one country records on the Billboard charts to their credit and have sold over 75 million records, making them one of the world's best-selling bands of all time. All Music credited the band with popularizing the idea of a country band and wrote that it's unlikely that any other country group will be able to surpass the success of Alabama. History 1969-79, Formation and Early Years Alabama formed in Fort Payne, Alabama, seen here in 1999. Alabama was formed by guitarists Randy Owen and Jeff Cook, and bassist Teddy Gentry, three cousins born and raised near Fort Payne, Alabama, an area with strong country music roots. Owen and Gentry grew up on separate cotton farms on Lookout Mountain, a plateau that stretches across northeastern Alabama, through northwest Georgia and into Tennessee, learning guitar together and singing in church before the age of six. Gentry and Owen played in numerous groups during the 1960s, ranging from pop to bluegrass. Cook joined the band in 1969 forming the group Young Country, which first jammed together around Christmas. Cook also played in numerous bands and was a rock and roll disc jockey. The three cousins all shared vocal duties, with another cousin, drummer Jackie Owen, completing the group's first lineup. The band's first performance was at a high school talent contest, playing a Merle Haggard song, for which they won first prize and tickets to the Grand OLE Opry SFN Earl Wine Woodstra Bogdan over Earl Wine 1997 P equals 4 Despite this, all were busy with prior commitments to pursue music, Owen still in high school. Cook working for Western Electric, and Gentry laying carpets full-time. The band grew further inactive when Cook went to college and Owen into the military. The group became a professional band in 1972, adding drummer Bennett Vartanian and changing their name to Wild Country. During this time, the group accepted a position playing at the nearby Canyonland theme park. The park would bring in established stars, such as Jerry Wallace, Bobby Bear, and Narvel Feltz, and the band would back them, afterwards performing a one-hour dance set. After a while, with opportunities for the band slimmed, a discouraged cook took a government job in Anniston, Alabama. Owen was studying English at Jacksonville State University, and Cook had an electronics job. The trio shared a $1.56 a month apartment in Anniston working to keep the band afloat with night and weekend gigs. The group decided to become professional musicians in 1973, and began performing at bars throughout the southeast. In March, the band relocated to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, 
performing six nights a week at a club named the Bowery for tips. They made their best money performing cover songs of Leonard Skinner and Merle Haggard. The group could not secure a record contract and began to self finance recordings. The group borrowed $4,000 from a Fort Payne bank to record and release their own albums to sell at shows. Vartanian dropped out of the group, and following a rotation of four more drummers, they settled on Rick Scott in 1974. The group sent out demo tapes to record companies but received few responses until executives at GRT Records signed the band to a one-record contract, issuing their debut single, I Want to Be With You Tonight, in 1977. GRT was more interested in the band as songwriters, and convinced the group to change their name to the Alabama Band later shortened to Alabama SFN McCall Rumble Kingsbury 2012 P equals 5 The song only reached number 78 on the Billboard Hot Country Songs charts, and GRT declared bankruptcy the following year. Due to a hidden clause in their contract, Alabama was forbidden from recording with another label. For the next two years, the band raised money to buy out their contract and they began recording again in 1979. Following self-recorded efforts Wild Country, 1976, and Deuces Wild, 1977, Alabama Band No. 3 became the band's third album, and the band performed over 300 shows on the road that year. The group hired independent radio promoters to receive radio play for the single I Wanna Come Over, and they sent handwritten letters to program directors and DJs nationwide. It received the attention of Dallas-based MDJ Records who signed the band. Scott left the group at this time, and was replaced by Mark Herndon, a rock drummer later credited with bringing the band their signature sound. I Wanna Come Over, became their first radio hit, reaching the top 40 in the Billboard country chart. 1980-87, Mainstream Success and Superstardom The group's next single, My Homes in Alabama, received an even better response. Reaching the top 20. Their early chart successes led to an invitation to appear at the New Faces show at Nashville's annual country radio seminar, along with other new acts, such as Reba McIntyre. The band had to perform with studio musicians, rather than as a band, and left the session believing they had destroyed their chances. Despite this, the group drew interest from several labels, among those RCA Records, with whom they signed in April 1980. Their first single on RCA, Tennessee River, was produced by Harold Shedd and was their first to hit number one on the Billboard country chart, beginning a streak of over 30 number one hits. Cashbox named the band the new vocal group of the year, marking the band's first award. In July 1980, the band left their longtime gig at the Bowery promoting their single which they initially believed to be fluke. The success took the band by surprise and soon became all but consuming. Alabama enjoyed a great deal of creative freedom at RCA, they followed up Tennessee River with Why Lady Why Despite the objections of executives and trade publications the song became their second number one on the charts. They toured extensively, headlining small clubs and opening for bigger acts in major venues. In addition, the group also received television exposure on The Tonight Show starring Johnny Carson and The Merv Griffin Show. In February 1981, Alabama released its second major label album, Feels So Right, it peaked at number 16 on the Billboard 200 and stayed for more than three years, longer than any other Alabama album. Old Flame was their next number one in February 1981, followed by Feels So Right in May, and Love in the First Degree that October. That year, Alabama received a great deal of industry attention, Billboard named them New Group for the Year, Radio and Records called them Group of the Year and the Academy of Country Music, ACM, deemed the band the vocal group of the year. The quintet performed on the 1981 Country Music Association Awards, where it received both Instrumental Group of the Year and Vocal Group of the Year. Although the band received unprecedented success, Owen's personal life was falling apart, his father died while he was on the road, affecting him greatly. Mountain Music, released in February 1982, is considered their final release before a significant upgrade in production and sound. All three of the album's singles reached number one, Mountain Music in May 1982, followed two months later by Take Me Down that July, and Close Enough to Perfect in October. That year, 
both Mountain Music and Feels So Right would go quadruple platinum. By late 1982, the band had sold over 6 million albums, despite just two years on the national circuit. Christmas in Dixie, a seasonal song released in 1982, charted on two of Billboard magazine's music popularity charts in six different calendar years. Alabama became the first group to win CMA's prestigious Entertainer of the Year Award, which they collected three years in a row, from 1982 to 1984. The group received a Grammy Award for Best Country Performance by a Duo or Group with Vocal, for Mountain Music. The Closer You Get, released in March 1983, was certified platinum within two months, and also won the Grammy for Best Country Performance. Each of the album singles Dixieland Delight, The Closer You Get, and Lady Down on Love were number ones in both the US and Canada Roll On was Alabama's next LP, and its four singles, Roll On, 18 Wheeler, When We Make Love, If You're Gonna Play in Texas, You Gotta Have a Fiddle in the Band, There's a, Fire in the Night, all went to the top in both countries 40 Hour Week, 1985, continued the band's string of multinational successes with 40-hour week, for a livin', and can't keep a good man down peaking at number one in both territories, with only the lead single, There's No Way, falling short in Canada, although it peaked at number two, 40-hour week was one of Alabama's most popular albums, crossing over in the pop album charts. Alabama Christmas, a collection of nine holiday songs plus Christmas in Dixie, became Alabama's debut on the compact disc that September, it was also the centerpiece of a retail and television promotion, sponsored by the Nashville Network. RCA issued an Alabama Greatest Hits compilation in January 1986, which went over five times platinum making the band the most successful country act of the 1980s. The Touch followed in September 1986, and although considered one of the weakest in the band's catalogue, it did have two number one hits, You've Got the Touch and Touch Me When We're Dancing. Their next record, Just Us, received a similar critical response, but produced two number ones, Face to Face and Fallen Again. They also contributed their vocals to Deep River Woman, a single by Lionel Richie, from Richie's third solo album Dancing on the Ceiling. Released in December 1986, the single peaked at number 10 on the Billboard Hot Country Singles Chart and number 71 on the Hot 100. 1987-2004, Decline in Popularity and Farewell Tour By the late 1980s, Alabama's sales slowed down considerably, with only their major albums going gold. The group's popularity was mostly eclipsed by more traditional-sounding artists such as Ricky Skaggs, Randy Travis, George Strait, and Dwight Yoakam. Despite this, they continued to be a popular touring act, and the band issued their first live album, Alabama Live, in 1988. For 1989's Southern Star, the band decided to part ways with longtime producer Shedd, instead splitting production duties between Josh Leo and Larry Lee, and the other half with Barry Beckett. Song of the South was another number one, and the album's remaining singles If I Had You, High Cotton, and Southern Star were number ones in both the U.S. and Canada. That year, Alabama were named by Billboard the country artist of the 1980s and the ACA voted the band the artist of the decade. Although their popularity continued to decline during the 1990s, their albums still reached gold and platinum status. The 1990 album Pass It On Down featured three number one singles, Jukebox In My Mind, Forever As Far As I'll Go, and Down Home. According to All Music, by the time the band released 1992's American Pride, they were among the genre's aging veterans. Richard Carlin of Country Music, a biographical dictionary, suggested that the group's harmonies sounded dated to the new audience. I'm in a hurry, and don't know why, became the album's biggest hit, reaching number one, the album's other singles still fared very well, with Take a Little Trip. Once Upon a Lifetime, and Hometown Honeymoon peaking within the top three cheap seats followed in 1993, with Reckless becoming Alabama's final number one, although most of the band's singles afterward peaked within the top ten. He Band's 1995 album, In Pictures, represented their 18th gold album, more than the 
total for any other country act to that point. In 1996, the group remained finalists in the Vocal Group of the Year at the Country Music Association Awards. The band released Dancin' on the Boulevard in 1997, exploring Rand B and Beach music. Singles Sad Lookin' Moon and Dancin', Shaggin' on the Boulevard were top five hits in the US and Canada. The following year, the group released for the record, a two-disc greatest hits compilation that contained two new singles How Do You Fall In Love and Keepin' Up. Both new tracks were hits on the Hot Country Singles and Tracks chart, peaking at number 2 and 14, respectively. For their 15th studio release, 20th Century, 1999, the band recorded a cover of, God Must Have Spent, A Little More Time On You by the boy band NSYNC in 1999, in a move that was considered an attempt to stay relevant. The single nonetheless hit number 1 in Canada number 3 on the U.S. country charts, and number 29 on the Billboard Hot 100. When It All Goes South, 2001, followed in 2001. If I never did another CD, this is the one I will always point to as the one that I was happy with the most, said Owen at the time of its release. Despite this, the album's singles did not fare well in comparison to past successes, with only the title track becoming a top 15 hit representing the band's last career peak. Alabama announced the American Farewell Tour in May 2002 at the Country Music Association Awards, CMAs, encompassing 40 tour dates, sponsorships, special events, and a TV special. Owen spoke then on the decision to part ways, when you get down to it, there are many, many factors involved some of them very personal. It's really about the integrity of the group, the dignity of the group. Owen later admitted the group was exhausted after 20 years of non-stop touring and recording, and everybody needed some time. The tour collected $15 million in box office before it even began, and Alabama performed to packed arenas from June to November 2003. Due to extraordinary fan response and overwhelming ticket demand, the tour was extended for an additional 30 shows, running between February and June 2004. The group performed their final show in October 2004 in Bismarck, North Dakota, with Herndon jokingly declaring I need a job as the concert closed. 2004 Present, Reunions In the ensuing years, Owen stayed active as a solo act, Cook with his all-star good time band and Gentry as a producer and with his band Rocket City. Herndon and the other group members had had a difficult relationship during the band's career. While he was present in each press photo and a photo of him once hung at Alabama's fan club and museum, Owen contended that he was never an official member of the group. He claimed his inclusion in photos was the label's idea, and that Herndon was a paid employee of the band, rather than a member. In May 2008, the other members of the group sued drummer Mark Herndon for $202,670 in money allegedly overpaid to him three years earlier after the band's farewell tour concluded. This money was factored into the net profit and given to Herndon before accounting was completed, an allegation Herndon has denied. The band did not sue Herndon until he requested money from the multiple live albums and songs that the band had released but never paid Herndon for playing on. Owen stated that RCA desired Herndon in the band so their image could be comparable to the Beatles. Despite their troubles, he stated they had no hard feelings in an interview years later, I don't have one thing against him in any way in the world. Owen was diagnosed with prostate cancer in 2010, but he was later given a clean bill of health, which led to the band's reunion, without Herndon. Following a series of tornadoes destroying homes and businesses throughout their state in 2011, Alabama assembled a benefit concert in Birmingham, called Bama Rising. Featuring the band's first set since 2004, alongside Luke Bryan, Cheryl Crow, and Brad Paisley, the concert raised $2.1 million. I guess we realized that maybe we missed the play in Gondnsp, and five or six years had gone by and we were like, maybe that wasn't as bad as we remember it being, said Gentry. In celebration of the group's 40th anniversary, Alabama resumed touring in 2013 for the Back to the Bowery tour, referencing the Myrtle Beach Club where they first became professional musicians. They also undertook a short cruise, the Alabama and Friends Festival at Sea, 
which left for the Bahamas on Norwegian cruise. Lines Norwegian Pearl Ship In addition, the band released Alabama and Friends, a tribute album encompassing covers from newer artists such as Jason Aldean and Florida Georgia Line, in addition to two new tracks by Alabama. The band released their first new studio album in 14 years, Southern Drawl, on September 18, 2015 via BMG Chrysalis. In 2016, Alabama were selected as one of 30 artists to perform on Forever Country, a mashup track of Take Me Home, Country Roads, On the Road Again, and I Will Always Love You that celebrates 50 years of the CMA Awards. Musical Style and Influences Alabama's music mixes both country, rock, and pop, particularly evident in their musical concept, the group was one of the first country bands to achieve significant airplay. Despite their influences from other genres, the band was most inspired by country music, which is most evident in their harmonies, songwriter, and approach. Stephen Thomas Earlwine writes that the band is indebted to country, particularly the Bakersfield sound of Merle Haggard, Bluegrass, and the sound of Nashville pop. The band echoed its country upbringing in one of its first trade articles, We're Country First and Crossover Second. If crossovers come, that's great, but we'd rather have a number one country song than be lost in the middle of both country and pop charts, said Owen. By the mid-1980s, the band increasingly moved toward a general pop rock sound, going for splashier productions with a more heavily amplified sound. Alabama's lyrics often centered on their homeland. Their first hit single, Tennessee River, recounts being born across the river in the mountains I call home, while Dixieland Delight chronicles cruising down a rural Tennessee byway. Chart records, sales, and awards. Multi-platinum certifications. Alabama is among the world's best-selling bands of all time, having sold a combined 75 million albums and singles. Alabama's best-selling studio album is Mountain Music, 1982, while two greatest hits albums Greatest Hits, 1986, and For the Record, 1998, are among their highest in individual sales, with all three totaling 5 million in sales. Alabama received multi platinum success for several albums. Albums currently certified quadruple platinum include Feels So Right, The Closer You Get, and Roll On, while Alabama's double platinum records include My Homes in Alabama. 40 Hour Week, Alabama Christmas and Greatest Hits Volume 3. Awards Alabama is the most awarded band in the history of country music, with over 200 awards from a variety of organizations. In 1981, Alabama won both the Vocal Group of the Year and Instrumental Group of the Year honors from the CMAs. It also won the ACM's Vocal Group of the Year Award, and Billboard New Group of the Year honors. The group won the CMA's prestigious Entertainer of the Year Award for three consecutive years, 1982-84 and the ACM's Entertainer of the Year Award five times, 1982-86. In 1989, Alabama was named Artist of the Decade by the ACM. In addition, Alabama has also received the NARM Gift of Music Award, the Alabama Hall of Fame Distinguished Service Award, the Country Radio Broadcasters Humanitarian Award, the Prince Machabali National Hero Award, the Bob Hope Humanitarian Award, and a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Legacy Impact Alabama has been credited with substantially broadening country's audience while becoming one of the most popular acts in American musical history by Michael McCall of the Encyclopedia of Country Music. The band was notable for its three-person lead, as most other country acts focused on a soloist accompanied by an anonymous band, their collective hair length and facial hair which would have been deemed unacceptable just a decade earlier, and their prominent electric bass and drums. They had a slightly edgier sound than other groups, and both played their own instruments and wrote their own songs. Alabama mostly appealed to a younger audience, although their clean cut image appealed to the more conservative, older country audience as well. Kurt Wolf described the band's appeal they're just rebel enough for the young folks, but their parents also dig the boys' pretty harmonies sentimental soft spots, and old-fashioned family values. 
Alabama gave prominence to their hometown of Fort Payne, and also raised awareness for environmental issues. The band's incorporation of rock and roll into their sound was an inspiration for groups such as Restless Heart, Shenandoah, Exile, Diamond Rio, Lone Star, Ricochet, and The Mavericks. According to Erwin Stamblier and Grelon Landon, authors of country music, the encyclopedia, the group's diminishing sales in the late 1980s reflected competition from country bands that would not have received recognition had it not been for Alabama paving the way. For their part, these groups credited Alabama with providing a massive influence on their careers. Prior to Alabama's unprecedented chart success, most country hit singles belonged to solo artists or duets. Many Alabama singles and albums represented crossover appeal on the pop charts. Despite their successes, Alabama's career was loaded by music critics of the day, citing the vacuous songs and watered-down, middle-of-the-road arrangements that blurred lines between country and pop. The Baltimore Sun once argued the band render s country music all but indistinguishable from pop and thus trivializes some of country's most hallowed traditions. Indeed, reviewers such as Wolf consider the band's overriding problem their calculated sound, which leads many contemporary music critics to label the band mediocre. Philanthropy Beginning in 1982 and continuing until 1997, Alabama sponsored the June Jam, a music festival in Fort Payne, which at its peak drew 60,000 fans and raised millions for local charities. The group also held Fan Appreciation Days, weekend events that included a golf tournament and a songwriters concert that raised money for charities in Fort Payne. Owen spearheaded Country Cares for Kids an annual country radiothon that raised over $70 million for St. Jude Children's Research Hospital in Memphis, Tennessee.